Welcome, welcome, welcome to another lesson with Miss Matt. Now today we're going to look at the topic interrelationships of plants and animals. What does it mean by interrelationship of plants and animals? Interrelationship of plants and animals has to do with how plants and animals are related. They have similar characteristics. In order for plants to be pollinated, the pollination has to be done by other animals or animal pollinators such as bees. They produce food such as different kinds of fruits and all those different kinds of fruits are then consumed by animals, for example humans. Now we know that plants are producers, they produce the food and animals are the consumers. What the plants produce, the animals consume, such as us humans. Animals and plants, which are living things, require food. All living things require food. Plants of all living things makes their own food. Therefore, they are called autotrophs. Now, the reason they are called other foods is because they are able to make their own food. Also, in the word other trope means self. And tropic means nourishment. Together, you get the word otro. So, that shows that plants of all living things are able to make their own food. They have that ability. They were given that ability to be able to make their own food. While plants are able to make their own food, right, because they are given that ability, animals are not able to make their own food, so therefore they are called heterotrophs. They have to seek food from other animals and plants whom are the producers for their food. Heather in the word heterotroph means other and trophic means nourishment. Now we're going to look at the three different types of animals, the three different types of feeders that exist in society. There are three different types and we have herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. So now we're going to look at each feeder. First one we have is herbivores animals which are herbivores. Now, Herbivores are herbivorous animals. They are plant eaters only. They only consume plants. For example, we have the cow and we know that the cow consumes grass. Now we're looking at carnivorous animals which are known as carnivores. There are two different kinds of carnivorous animals. You have the first set who eat other animals who only consume plants. Then you have the other animals whom they eat that only eat fleshy food. Now we're looking at omnivorous animals. Omnivorous animals are known as omnivores which eat both plants and animals so for example as you can see the lady on the screen she is a human and she consumes both plants and animals so for example we eat cabbage a plant and we also eat chicken or we eat fish which is a animal so omnivores animals eat both plants and animals
simple food chain showing the interrelationship of plants and animals. Now, what starts off the food chain? The food chain starts off with the leaf. What is the leaf? The leaf is known to be the producer. Who is the producer again? The producers are known to be plants because they are able to make their own food. Now the leaf there is the producer and it starts the food chain. Now who will consume the leaf? The leaf will be consumed by the caterpillar. Who is the caterpillar? The caterpillar is known to be the herbivorous animal or the herbivore. Who will consume the caterpillar? The caterpillar will be consumed by the chameleon. Who is the chameleon? The chameleon is known as carnivore. Now, this kind of carnivore only consumes other animals who only eat plants only. Then we have the snake. The snake will consume the chameleon. Now the snake also is a carnivore. But what kind of carnivore is the snake? The snake is a kind of carnivore who only eats fleshy meat. Then we have the mongoose. And the mongoose will eat the snake, and the mongoose is also a carnivore. So the food chain basically shows the interrelationship between plants and animals. What eats what? Who eats what?